Reverse Spoonerisms presents... Wait, isn't... Wouldn't that just be words? Whatever. The Young Southpaw Part of an Hour. Ding! I was just making a salad, you know? And it's weird. Like, I mean, I was listening to music while I'm preparing food. I, I guess I was just too hungry, you know? I didn't press play on anything. Got me to thinking, though, like, are there any bands with the names of salad dressings? Or even marinades? Well, my first thought was Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, you know? I mean, you often have, like, sunflower, pumpkin seeds. Well, I guess it's more in the salad itself, not the actual dressing. But like I said, that was my first thought. I mean, go a little easy on me, please. I mean, it's still relevant to the overall picture of the salad. But, like, first of all, you know, I mean, you'd want them to be decent quality seats. Especially if you were paying for them in a restaurant. They couldn't have, you know, just gone bad. You know, that Van Halen song, you know, Girl Gone Bad, but in seed form. And you wouldn't want, you know, also in this dressing, you know, the remains of Nick Cave in it. Even if it was, I mean, one of Australia's finest songwriters. I mean, most likely it'd just be somebody named Nick Cave. I mean, you know how business works. I mean, so legally they can call this dressing Nick Cave in the bad seats. Oh, yeah, I, I don't want that, you know? Or like... Fishbone? You choke on that. You want to keep that away from food. Huh. I mean, huh. Like, who else is there? I mean, I know there are other bands in the world besides Nick Cave and Fishbone. It's just the question is so mind-boggling, you know? It's got me all in a tizzy. I mean, Van Halen, I guess I said them already. You know, obviously that would be an incredible salad dressing. But I do not know what it would contain. The replacements is odd because it it wouldn't be the salad dressing you ordered, you know. And if you didn't like what they offered as a substitute, I mean, you'd have to put in a new order. I mean, this sounds pretty, I mean, on paper at least, the salad dressing that is a cross between the replacements and new order. Actually, I, I can't even picture it, you know, let alone hardly wait. And guided by voices would be crazy if it was like moving around, you know. Be kind of cool. I mean, you wouldn't have to toss, you know, toss the salad in the strictly culinary sense of the term, you know. You just throw this on and some ethereal entity would guide it all around and that would be amazing you know but it doesn't really tell me much you know about about the nature of what it would taste like i mean that's what i'm trying to get at you know there's no band called sesame avocado i mean that i know of but that gets problematic, because, like, what would Sesame Avocado sound like? Would they just cover the theme tune to Sesame Street, but as if it were a, a road covered in a thin layer of guacamole? Bad brains? That would be a terrible salad dressing. Whew. Though that DC scene, you know? Minor Threat had that tune, Salad Days. I mean, I, I was making my meal at night. Salad nights? I mean, do goths eat salad? Is this what the Stones painted black was about? I mean, why would they do that? Write a tune about the eating habits of the fans of a musical genre that would not exist for another decade or more? I mean, do any bands write songs about 
other genres fans foods of choice? Do they do that, you know? Not that I'm even claiming that goths think salad is the bee's knees or whatever. The B-52s, you know? Bombers exploding salads, you know? The teardrop explodes! I mean, that would be rad! You know those restaurants that people go to to cry at? I mean, the Shays loves those. He goes all the time, man. I, ooh, I ain't been with him yet. I mean, it's... It, it kind of sounds amusing. I get it, you know, the concept, but I think the very reality of it, once once you're there, would be pretty depressing. You know, just solitary folks crying alone over their food. But like this teardrop explodes salad dressing would be like, you know, a dressing that once a teardrop falls onto it, your food explodes. Adds a whole new element to this this dining experience, you know? I mean, it can be a wonderful thing. Really, really shake you out of your sorrow. Very effective. I wonder if the teardrop explodes themselves thought of these things, you know, as a band, you know, and band meetings and whatnot. I mean, merch was a lot different in the late 70s, early 80s, you know? I mean, even now! Never see any salad dressings on the merch table. I mean, you have to be careful, you know, if they spilt all over the t-shirts, you know? Though I guess it depends who spills them, who does the spilling, you know? If a member of the band, then you could sell that shirt for more. Hate hate to bring business into it like that, but, you know, it's, it's the reality of the thing. I mean, I wonder if at those restaurants... I mean, I gotta ask the Shays, man, I mean... Maybe I'll finally have to get out to one. But I mean, does it extend beyond just salad? Because I mean, I get it. You know, I totally get it. If this happens, you know, once at the beginning of the meal, you know, over your first course, you know, bring you to your senses, you know. You're on high alert in case anything else unexpectedly blows up. The whoa! I wonder if they have, like, timed seating slots, you know, if it's if it's just that fancy, you know? Because then there'd be, like, explosions happening all over the room at the same time? I mean, they must have volatile dessert toppings, too. And I, I wonder which makes more sense, you know? To snap out of it a bit before your main meal? Or to get all the grieving out and then... Have a dessert detonate right in front of you, you know, at the very end. But if you actually want to eat as well as cry, you know, it's going to get quite tedious. Like if, say, you're real hungry by the time your entree arrives, you just happen to shed a tear on it and that explodes too. And you're paying good money for this. Woo! I mean, Dinosaur Jr. had that song, Puke and Cry, you know. I wonder, I wonder if that was, like, the inspiration. I mean, are there, like, adjacent vomitoriums at these places? Man, I gotta ask the Shays, you know. Get the rundown. But there was also that band salad. I mean, wonderful opportunities for touring package bills, you know. I, I mean, you can't put salad on itself. This is like a mathematical thing. You know, I, I feel like I learned this in high school. If you add salad to salad, it just gets subsumed in the set of salad. The mathematical set, not the set of musical songs they're playing that night. Though it'd be real interesting to combine them both, you know? I mean, is, the, is this that new math they're always talking about? Especially if they were the house band at one of these crying restaurants. The house salad, you know? Whew. This sounds like quite the experience. Shays is always the forerunner on these types of things, man. I mean, again, I don't want to bring business into it, but I mean, by its very nature, you know, like, uh, 
I mean, you, you would think that the waiters at these places would be overwhelmed by all the sadness about them. Every which way they turn, you know? Just people bawling their eyes out. But I mean, of course, they get hardened to it over time. Then, then the flip side be, I mean, the upshot for the moguls is that, you know, these waiters are never in danger of crying onto the food they're carrying. So, you know, it doesn't blow up before it reaches the customer's table. I mean, clever, I guess, you know, if a bit cynical. I could never do it. What about, like, gold frap, you know? I mean, technically, you know, malted beverages are not what you would usually think of putting on a salad. But it's certainly one of the closest band names i thought of so far, you know, to that sort of consistency, you know? Look kind of cool, too, being all gold, you know? Super chunk, maybe? G love and special sauce. I mean, sauce may be as close as we're going to get. I mean, she love just makes me wish it was, you know, of course, the glove, you know. Collaboration between Robert Smith and Steve Severin, you know. I mean, the cure, if this had medicinal properties too, it'd be the craziest restaurant I've ever been to. And I, I ain't even been there yet. Afghan wigs would just be hilarious, you know? You're, you're served this big thing of hair on your plate, and you're, you lift it up, and it's like, well, maybe like a, a live raccoon. I, I think I'm getting a little mixed up now. Again, that Cure album, but, you know, I mean, I don't know all the world's languages. I just don't, you know? I don't know if, like, somewhere the word for salad and the word for live raccoon are the same, you know, or even synonymous. I was just thinking, you know, thinking of the wig part of it, you know, psychedelic furs, too. Though there's that Black Sabbath song, Rat Salad, which Eddie Van Halen wanted to name VH at one point. I mean, the soup dragons, you know. Why not the salad dragons as well? You add dragon to a dish. I mean, the name, not the actual mythical being, you know. Poison? That's a big no. Can you imagine poison trying to sell salad dressing? I mean, who would buy that? Oof! Though, I, I might stand corrected, because, I mean, fans do crazy things. Though, it, it'd make more sense for Brian Jonestown Massacre to do it. Actually, what if the two of them toured together? Pavement, hard to chew, you know? I mean, no one's making this easy. The dead boys. I don't know why these are all the ones coming to me when I'm just trying to think of a simple food, you know? I mean, we've already covered cannibalism. I, I sincerely hope there's not, like, a bunch of legalese, you know, that somehow make it acceptable to name a salad after, you know, the cannonball run and yet somehow have it contain human flesh. Let, let's move away from the punk names then, you know. I mean, Ida Brickell, the New Bohemians? That's, I mean, how many New Bohemians are there in the first place? I mean, salads are not that big. It's usually just a small bowl. Or, or plate, you know, if you want to switch it up. How will all these bohemians, even, even with their alternative lifestyles, you know, I mean, how will they fit on such relatively tiny dishware? Pulp? Pulp actually might be acceptable, you know? Sweet? No. Especially since salad is most often a vegan food, you know? I mean, super furry animals as well. I mean, that kind of combines everything right there. Again, a very small plate. There was, there was that post-Hefner band, you know, the French, not 
you know, just French, but it's close enough. You know, not to be confused with my friend, the French, who told me about all those infinite hotel rooms, you know. A thousand island? I, I guess there's future islands. I mean, if there, if there were a thousand bands with islands in the title, I mean, that would be just be excessive, you know, though, though it would solve the problem. But like, you know, Lonely Island too. If like you need to get a thousand islands, a lonely island with 999 other islands isn't really, well, I, well, I guess you, you, can, you can still be lonely, you know, that whole alone in a crowd thing. But there's also a chance, you know, that with, with that much company, they might not be that lonesome anymore. And, and you, you can't take that risk, you know? You can't be breaking up bands just to make salad dressing. All musicians should probably learn that early on. You know, save themselves a lot of pain. A lot of culinary preparation as well. I mean, just buy some salad dressing, you know? I mean, don't, don't take it so hard. Though, man, I mean, how how does this sit with the whole starving artist thing? Well, well, I guess, like, maybe it's, like, motivation, you know? Keeping you focused on making the big time when you'll have enough money to be eating in all these crying restaurants. I mean, if we could just convince 999 to add islands to their name, We'd be golden!